Hello and welcome to today's episode of Rock Code Live. I am your host, Rock Code. Today we are continuing our series of running Laravel on Kubernetes, trying to make sure that we tackle all the different edge cases and real scenarios that people need to solve to be able to scale properly. Today specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how we can get metrics out of our Laravel application and use that for some auto scaling. Plus, one of my guests, Alex, has got some random ideas to do that with QWorkers too. So it's going to be a little bit of fun and a little bit of, well, what the hell are we doing? But we'll work it out. So let's introduce my guests for today. I am joined by Alex Bowers and Kira McNulty. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me again today. Uh, we'll, as always, we'll just quickly do introductions and um, feel free to use as little or as much time as you want, starting with Alex. Um, yeah, I'm just a Laravel developer, but it's uh, known David for a few couple of years now, but very we see each other once a year, and I keep asking about Kubernetes, and eventually we managed to start doing some of these videos, and here we are. Kim, right, Short I'm Kim. Um, <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Good. Oh, you're good. Hi, I'm Kieran. I'm a consultant. Um, my background's in development, but I do a lot of coaching around agile and testing, and uh, the actual deployment bit is nice to be involved in because it's a little bit outside my comfort zone <laughs> yeah i think today what to else <laughs> yeah today is definitely an episode of uh, fun discovery mm -hmm. as we try and tackle the, the scaling aspects of running any i guess any application on kubernetes this is obviously specific to php and laravel today but the same stuff that we're going to do the same concepts will work across everything and already now we can see their first message in the discuss channel uh discord have a bug in their stream overlay which means all the the names of people are object objects so that's awesome was that you alex or was that someone else yeah <laughs> uh, somebody else uh, somebody called john i believe ah. i'll get the chat open let's have a look yes yeah, so john McCabe. <laughs> Hey, John, uh, it would be good if I could see your name, but uh, I'll reach out to Discord and see if we can get that fixed. Regardless, we're testing out the Discuss live chat thingy on our stream. We'll see how we get on. I may move it at some point. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, please feel free to drop any questions that you have into the comment section and we will tackle them as we go. Now, why don't we try and recap where we got to last time? And it may be best to do that through the power of code because we i think we got quite far didn't we alex uh yeah we got very um like a good amount was done we had um at the end of it we had migrations working we had uh queues set up and running through um those were the two main things there was a couple of other things that we managed to cover as well but can't remember what they are now um but yeah we made some good progress on a production level application last uh, last right. time well, let's see what's still working, because uh, who knows? Uh, let's see what did where did I put everything? <laughs> all of the all of the roots are all of the um the features that we built last time are in the roots folder, so we can see there to see what we covered. Uh, so where where did we put the manifests? Oh, it was inside of slash uh, resources ops. Oh yeah, I'm looking for my my opt directory, but. Oh, well, there we go. So we've got our Docker files, we've got our config map, we have a deployment. We actually have our cron job, which was to run. What was this for? Um, so <laughs> Lightfall has a job scheduler built in. So for every minute, it can you can um, the scheduler gets called, and you, from there you can dispatch different jobs in PHP for whatever you need to do. Right. Uh, so you can see the example for that in um, App Console. Um, kernel, I think it is. Does Laravel have a way of instead scheduling them directly, scheduling the jobs directly from Cron? Uh, yeah, so ev every, every single um, command that you create in Laravel, you can just hit using like PHP Artisan command name, right, right. and you could do that directly right. from the Cron. But if you want to, for example, add conditional logic, so you do a database query to see. Yeah. Do you, do you need to care about running this? Um, yeah. you, you do that in the, uh, the kernel, the console kernel. Yeah, yeah. And it also has some nice syntax um, sugar uh, where you can do like, you can use the words like every evening rather than trying to figure out what 
random stars and commas and numbers mean. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think I'm all caught up, which is useful. I also see that I nicely added a make file, which has two commands for building these containers. So why don't we get them built? Let's apply our Kubernetes manifest directory and see if anything blows up. Hopefully, we just get our application working, uh, and then we can start getting some metrics out of it. It was left in a working state, so I'd be, <laughs> I'd that, be upset if it breaks in, in the two weeks between. Yeah. Yeah. All right, build Nginx and build FPM. A smarter person would have done this prior, but still. <laughs> uh, da -da. I'm sure it won't take too long, though. Although, whenever I see an npm command, I do get slightly worried. npm ci, so it's not, it shouldn't be doing as much as a normal install would be, because it uses the lock file to have a specific versions, so it shouldn't have to do any dependency resolution, I don't think. All right, mm -hmm. well, we'll get these but built. I'm saying that we're st we are 30 seconds in, so, you know. <laughs> take what you want from that, I guess. <laughs> Well, my Mac is in airplane mode where it's trying to take off. So we'll see. I can hear the fans over the headphones, which is never a good sign. That's Although, the sign that you're using Node, isn't it? Well, mm. I wonder, like, with your shiny M1 oh, Mac, you. Kieran, do your fans ever go? I've heard um, it's much better. I've had it... Oh, God, when did I buy it? I've had it a couple of months, and um, I've heard the fans once. Wow. Uh, Wait, they well, sell one without um, fans only now as well, so. Yeah, the air doesn't. That's brave. If you're doing any node stuff, that's brave. All right, here we go. It looks like it's now finishing at least one of our images. So. Uh, I yeah, left the engine next one should be the slow one, so. Sorry, okay. I left I left some CAD software running overnight, and that's when the fans ran. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time. Oh, that's and it's pretty good. Really cold. Well, hopefully they bring out another one. I'll buy the second version, but I'm not buying the first. Yeah, they'll bring out an, an amazing one at the end of the year, and I'll be jealous. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm getting a new one. Um, a, oh god, next month in March, sometime in March or April. Um, okay. so without doubt, it'll be about May or June when the next one comes out, just as uh, mine's been delivered. So yeah, we'll see. If you need to use it to do Docker stuff day to day, it's still not quite there. Um, we don't use Docker in the company at the moment. We're moving towards that. So hopefully by the time we get that new environment set up and stuff, um, it's a bit more stable. Well, yeah. Now we're compiling extensions. <laughs> I may go make yeah. a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you clear out your Docker cache quite often or something, uh, David? Uh, yeah, every 13 seconds, probably. I'm always, uh, well, because I always go into my Docker settings and just click like reset everything and just kill it. Uh, okay. I, I do that far too often. I do it on my phone too. Like when I was on Android, I would clear all when I'm on the task manager. Now I'm on iOS, there's no clear all button, but I just keep swiping apps away anyway. And people keep telling me that's actually bad. Um, but it's just, I guess, habit more than anything. Yeah, it's meant to use more power to start the app back up again, isn't it? I know, it's just something I've always done. Not using it, close it. Not using it, close it. And I do it, yeah, with Docker too. I'm always killing containers and images. I think I'm the opposite. I basically at some point notice my machine's ro running really slowly and has no disk. <laughs> and do yeah. Docker I'm PS currently that. I'm currently rocking about 20 gig of disk space left, so I'm what? slowly just like working my way through various things clear and stuff out. I don't even think I'm it, using 20 painful. gig. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's painful. And I can't have any icons on my desktop either. I can't have any downloads in the downloads folder. Like every, I just I clean everything up really quickly. It's probably better that way than the alternative, which is I have just my downloads folders, everything I've ever downloaded. <laughs> Useful or not? All right, there we, there go. we go. And I'm sure everyone's really disappointed because they were loving that conversation where I was talking about files <laughs> on my desktop. But <laughs> well, at least I still got my command history in this directory, so that's useful. So we're going to do a kube control apply. We're going to do everything. 
I'm assuming we built it in a way that that should be all right. Looks good. Yeah. Wow, this is going to work. <laughs> Our init containers you sound, are paused. You sound like you had no faith. Yeah, the, the, that and it's going to fix itself. I think that's just MySQL. My Rudy be not happy yet. I'm hoping. Is this local Kubernetes? It is yeah, local so Kubernetes. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at one of these. Well, this one says initializing. Let's try. It. I'll look one more time. There we go. Perfect. Nice. <sighs> okay, so. Uh, now we've got, I'm assuming, a service. Let's port forward. SVC. Oh, we didn't create a Laravel service. Okay, so we'll just port forward to a pod. Uh, 8080 on port 80. And we should just have our oh, application. Uh, maybe I'll hide that. Uh, yep, that was exactly <laughs> what I built. Yep. All right, this should be read. Uh, not going to make us a uh, million dollars by any means, but functional for today. So what we want to do now is, well, we don't really want to, you know, we talk about auto scaling. Normally we talk about scaling up, but I want to equally emphasize that we want to be able to scale down when required too. So right now we are running five replicas of our Laravel application and I'm the only user. So maybe this is slightly overkill. So uh, what we want to do as skill is up and down accordingly. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Okay. How do we do it? <laughs> okay, right. yeah. Good, good first question, that one. Okay, so why don't we start with the naive approach? In fact, no, no, let's, let's go back to that question. Like, what what do we think we want from auto-scaling? When, when do we scale up? What's the best way to scale up? when there aren't enough resources at the current scale level for what we're trying to do yeah i like the i like the usage of resources there definitely something that we can use to determine whether we, we scale up uh yes or when performance isn't good enough at the current scale level yes the so you know we're getting into the conversation i like like when we talk about what how is it, how is the application performing for our end users um mm. when, so when i say naive auto scaling resources is normally the first approach people say well you know if i'm running out of cpu or memory then we probably want to be able to scale accordingly because we think that we think that performance will be uh, degraded in some way um, but i like to work with end users so we're going to try and tackle both i think um because uh maybe okay let's scale it down let's see what happens does anybody know any HTTP load testing tools? I probably should have asked that. Um, I use one called Siege. Siege. Is that the Apache one, isn't it? Maybe? Uh, no, it's, um, that's, there's Apache Bench. The one I use is, uh, let me find it. Otherwise, I'm just going to go to Google and search for Rust. Um, this tool. is the one I use is just, it's by somebody called Joe Dog Siege. Okay. I'll, I'll post it in the uh, Discord. Why is my alt tab not working to my terminal? But it goes to VS Code. <laughs> I'll restart that in a minute. All right, let's reapply this over the top. And that should scale down. Good, so now we're just gonna run one. I guess, I'm not even sure, this is where my Laravel knowledge will probably let me down with the first kind of scaling scenario. But, you know, if I throw Siege at our application, which is running on a single pod inside of a local Kubernetes cluster, and had it with 10,000 requests, am I likely to see CPU and memory usage increase? Probably not massively. It depends on how many concurrent requests, I guess, and what the resource allocation is. But obviously, our homepage there is literally just returning the string, hello world. Um, maybe we change the code to make it, I don't know, like calculate an MD5 Ten thousand times, or it's just something so it actually does some work might be worth doing. Yeah, do we do we want it to create database load as well? Maybe. Uh, I don't believe there's there's no models or anything set up on this. Oh, actually, no, there was there were models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we we, we created version. some posts, blog posts, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, was we can look at the database point? load. Um, if you open up the, I can't. It might be slower. I can't remember. Ah. 
Um, if you open up the roots file, the roots web PHP file, that's got all of the endpoints that I created in there. Yeah, there we go. Well, okay. we, do have, we do have stuff in the database. All right, you sent me this, geodog slash siege. Uh, is there a brew package for it? Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's see if we can run that, and let's just mon You know, we're just going to, on a very simple basis, look at the CPU and memory utilization, and then we'll see if we can cause a very naive scaling situation. So, again, more stuff I should have done up front. But oh well. <laughs> yeah. If you if you have it loading stuff from the database, PHP will perform badly <laughs> because it will block waiting for the responses which ties up processes so that that will kill the sort of concurrency it's all right it's better than it used to be yeah uh, can you remember what we put this on was it 7.4 or 8.0 uh php uh, David? i don't know um, I actually can i can check the docker file can't i yeah yeah resources ops docker fpm uh 7.4 yeah, um, quite a lot of improvements were made in 8.0, um, but hopefully 7.4 means we see better examples for scaling because it'll be worse performance, I guess. Uh, I saw right. the other day one of the features that's landing in 8.1 has a 20% speed improvement, real world. For some um, I think that's to do with uh, linked, um, linked caching of um, like inheritance files in classes or something, I think. But I don't think it's like your page will be twenty percent better. I think it's what was what was like a very small portion of your like load time is twenty percent better than it was on that small section. Yeah. So real world is well, probably pages like, like the one we're looking, looking at. Pages like the one we're looking at that's just doing CPU. Yeah. Well yeah. All right. Our application. Oh, we got a comment from Anika who mentioned hay for load testing. I've actually heard people mention that before. I'll check it out another time. But for now, I'll run Siege just because I've got it installed. Uh, we're going to hit localhost on 8080, and if I just do this, I'm assuming it's going to magically just start firing requests at it. I mean, is, um, that, is that it working? I, I think so. If you cancel it, it tells you then how many requests it's did, I think. I'm not I'm not really sure. I normally pass yeah. through dash C and dash T. Well, our dash availability... Is how long you want to run for, dash C is how many concurrencies. Well, it looks like we potentially got failed requests even with just the basic settings there. So Nice. Uh, yeah, I think it was working. Concurrency 13. Uh, and our availability dropped to 44% that time. So, Wow, so it's actually, that's for me, okay. Our response time is 11 seconds. Is that, is that, can't be real. No, that might be milliseconds. Uh, can't be 11 seconds, surely. I would hope not, right? It's doing nothing. <laughs> Because that home page is just a bit the page which says like this is my this should be read or whatever. Mm. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Okay, let's try and let's try and scale this then. So um, we can pull up the documentation for so Kubernetes has a primitive called an HPA, which is the horizontal pod auto scaler which out of the box doesn't do an awful lot, but we can do CPU based scaling. As uh, you know, the, the, the kubelet that's just running in containers does have some form of metrics coming out of it and it knows what they're being used. Hopefully we've got an example YAML here that we can kind of steal. Computer said no. There we go, example. Been years since last heard that. Computer said no. <laughs> yeah. Wow, they actually used PHP uh, with a square root function to try and trigger CPU intensive computation. <laughs> so, but well. Uh, that's our deployment, that's our service. Let's get down to the good stuff. Where is it? Oh, they're using the auto scale command to create one. All right, let's go with that. Uh, deployment, 
Laravel. Example. Why did we give it such a verbose name? Um, or didn't we? I don't remember. Yeah. Project. Ah. Project. Thank you. And you can see now we have a horizontal pod autoscaler. So what we can do is uh, get our HPA, which has got the same name. Take a look at it in YAML. And mm. this is our spec. So it has max replicas of 10, minimum replicas of one. Of course, we always want one of these. Uh, and the naive implementation is if the target or the CPU utilization goes above 50%, we're going to want more of these. So in theory, we have one pod now. I wonder if we just run Siege again and watch that, if we'll see an auto scaling event kick off. Are we feeling confident with that? No, me neither. Okay. <laughs> uh, wrong split. Let's go this way. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'll just run the pod watch for here. And I'll run Siege again here. Anyone get any jokes just now? <laughs> I have, but not appropriate for stream, so. <laughs> it's always the worst question to ask somebody, isn't it? Have you got a joke? It's too much pressure. I've got a question, I've got a question about the config. Um, it, does each of these pods, do the Laravel pods have an Nginx and an FPM in them? Uh, no, it's just PHP FPM What's in there. And then the Nginx one uh, loads it across from the FPM image. Look, it's so scaled. Really... Okay. That's nice. Okay, so I think I know where Kieran's question was going. So I'm going to try and uh, magically discuss what you were thinking there. Is if we sure. do, uh, uh, maybe you can't see it from the screen. All right, okay, we'll do it the long way. Oh no, that didn't scale, did it? It said it was creating a new container, though. Oh, that's our job, our oh, cron job. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's the cron job one, yeah. Okay. All right, so let's work out why it doesn't skill yet. Uh, so, Kieran, I think your question was, based on the HPA configuration that we've seen up here, is that which container is it using to determine if the CPU went too high? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, it's a good question. So let's see if we can get some metrics from this. And this may not even w w work, but let's see. If we do top node and top pod yeah no metrics api okay um so that's probably why our autoscaler isn't kicking in either is that we need to actually provide a way to get metrics out of this kubernetes hasn't shipped with a default metrics implementation since uh i'll throw one out there 1.9 something like that um everything in fact that was later than that but everything's been extracted so let's get the metrics server running in our cluster first uh, please if i don't explain anything just prod me so the metrics API, that's what the um, horizontal scale is looking for. Um, the, I, don't, uh, I actually scaling. don't remember if it uses the metrics server or not. I believe it probably will. Um, it may do something cruder when it's not available, but I'm going to just. I was just, I was just wondering why that didn't like error when you tried to spin it up if it didn't have a server available. But. Ah, well, also, we don't even have any resource constraints on our pods, do we? So what 50% yeah. utilization of what the full system. <laughs> that, yeah, that could take a while to get to, yeah. So there's loads of things here that I'm obviously just uh, winging it. So let's go back to our deployment. So we don't have any resource constraints, do we? Da, da, da. Oh, we oh, do. Wait, we do. All right, okay. Yeah, and they're not particularly great, right? So 50 meg of memory and half a core which I'm assuming we're probably hammering that pretty well. So I'm going to assume it's just metric server, which we've already deployed to our cluster now. That should mean it's just not ready yet. So we'll give it a little bit of time. Let's see. Metric server. So 
the metric server is going to run in the cluster. It's going to start scraping for stuff, and this should be exposed soon. He says, hopefully. Uh, the service isn't available yet, so if we just do, if we actually do a cube system, describe service, we should see the endpoints be added to it once it gets past the liveness probes that consider it healthy, which could be anywhere from ten seconds to a minute, probably. So, uh, metrics. My service is called, yeah, metric service. All right, so we need to wait for an IP address to show up here. <laughs> Lots of waiting in Kubernetes, right? <laughs> At least it's all stuff it sorts itself out with. Yeah, and I'm far too impatient and just keep running commands against my cluster. Uh, one of the things I could do is check out the probes on that metric server pod. Uh, yeah, still unhealthy at the moment. How are the probes configured? 10 second intervals, waiting for one success. So, really should be healthy by now. I wonder if this is where I found out that the metric server doesn't work with Docker for Mac. service yeah where's my endpoints come on uh, let's get the logs from it I don't really want to debug this too much but you can see we've got four restarts on this so I may switch to minikube if that's going to save us some pain but let's see what we're dealing with <sighs> That's fun. So it's failing because the certificate coming from the API server doesn't contain the IP address. <laughs> All right, let's switch. Uh, 1.10, let's not do that. All right, we're spinning up Minikube. That means I will have to rebuild the images, unfortunately. So, but they should get his metrics server running. How come the images have to be rebuilt? Aren't they stored on your local machine? They are, but the Minikube runs inside of a small virtual machine, which won't have access to my host. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I mean, it's I can- some way of packaging them up for export, isn't there? I, I could um, save them to a tarball and import them into the minikube. Would that save me time? I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, I was kind of hoping Docker for Mac would, would just work, but I don't really want to debug why a metric server can't speak to it. I guess while well, we wait for that, we can just quickly do a Docker for a Mac metric server. Well, someone's already written about this. Hmm. Oh, so we're just, they're just adding the insecure. Oh wait, do not enable this. That's just oh, when it'll be accessed oh, externally. All right, let's do it. Let's modify the metric server to accept that flag. Uh, that. I'm pretty sure Minikube's just changed my context. Yep. Docker desktop. Uh, get deploy, edit, deploy, metrics, server, args, next. Done. We feeling confident? <laughs> so the next time you do a cube, um, cube CTL apply, um, would that not override that config that's there? I totally would. I'm server. just not going to apply the metric server again. 
<laughs> right, okay. But if, if you were to apply the metrics over again, it would like nuke whatever you changed. Oh yeah, definitely. It would totally right. do that. But I do think we have an endpoint now. So I'm glad we giggled that instead of rebuilding on Minikube. Uh, thank you, Code with Dan. Uh, okay, so. Which means we have a metric server working, which means we do have access to top pods. Uh, and now we can actually see how much uh, CPU and memory is being consumed by our Laravel application and our, um, and how much memory. So we're actually only using 1M cores uh, and 18 meg of memory. So, oh, Siege isn't running anymore. Uh, and my port forward's gone. Oh, port forward. <laughs> Too many moving parts. All right, port forward to Laravel. Laravel, example. Oh. 80, 80. All right, that stays there. Run siege, run top. So we should just hopefully see this claim as the requests come in. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit of latency in the metric server, probably around, uh, I can't remember what the default scrape interval is going to be, but let's assume 30 seconds. Hopefully we see the, the CPU, I mean, it, it doesn't seem to get to 250M previously, or we would have seen an auto-scaling event. So we may just tweak the resources on it and force it to scale earlier. Um, is, it worth, is it worth making it so it hits the one which hits the database as well, perhaps? Yeah. So if you send yeah. it to slash post, send your requests to slash posts instead of just to the home page, maybe. Yeah. Is there a watch on this? No, that would have been too handy. Uh, can't you just wrap it in a watch dash n one? I on could. That? I could. But then what would I type? Oh look. Ah, nice. So that should auto scale then now. Yes. Yes, because it's made it over fifty percent of the allocated resources. I hope so. <laughs> Although I'm not seeing another one spin up there. Yeah, but, uh, so the HP is going to wait for a few different data points there. So uh, uh, let's double check. Uh, these are limits. Yeah. Okay. So we we should see an auto scale. I'm pretty confident we'll see an auto scale. I hope. We'll let it do its thing. Um, and then I'll maybe change it to hit the database endpoint to see if we can force it a little bit quicker. Uh, and then we'll actually do something a bit more fun anyway. Like we want to we want to start instrumenting this. Oh, come on, give me another pod. Let's double check our HPA. Uh, why is that not coming up? Are those old? Yeah, I think so. If it's unable to get metrics for resource CPU. The age is only 3 minutes 41 though. Yeah, I don't think we've been running uh, the metrics actually, four, Yeah, 4 minutes away. Yeah, it's quite well. Okay, yeah, so, so I think it is working. We're just not seeing a scale yet. Hmm. Okay, let's try and force it before we move on to the next thing. Let's put this down to 100, which we know will cross pretty quickly. Oh, but we are hitting the 500. All right, I'm going to blame the HPA. Question, Kieran, or just sign at my? Yeah, is the when you when you set a CPU limit? I'm, I was trying to decide whether to ask the stupid question. When when you set a CPU limit, that doesn't actually limit the amount of CPU that that pod can use, right? Because we're talking about it going past the limit. So is the limit just metadata? No, we've got actually uh, an enforced limit of 500M. Uh, the CPU utilization may not be on the limit, actually. It may be on the full host, and we are blocking it before it ever gets there. So I guess, in theory, why don't we just do 1%? Well, I guess my question is, if it's got a limit of 500 and we're saying auto scale, how would it ever get past 500 to trigger auto scaling? Yeah, good point. I think that's my question. <laughs> 
<laughs> the thing never use more than 500 and then scale up if you go over 500. So instead of using limits, then do we need to use the requests um, flag? To be honest, I, I'm making this up. I never used resource based auto scaling because it's, <laughs> it's well, it's not ideal. Um, so let's see if we can get it working before we move on. Though. So let's change this to just requests, which means we're, we want to make sure we allocate half a core with 50 mega memory. Uh, how many cores have I given to Docker for Mac? Let's let's check that first, and then we'll just give it access to all of them. Come on, Docker. Oh, it popped open over there. Let's drag it over. So my resources for Docker for Mac are eight cores. So I'm going to give this the full thing. Uh, the request will fail. Right, I'll limit it at that. Uh, so let's reapply our PHP application. I'm in the wrong directory. Did you change it to be 1% was when it scaled as well? Yeah, I just want to force it to scale. That's all. So I'm going to run Siege again. Run get pods. Oh, well, it looks it... like there was some stuff because there's stuff terminating now. <laughs> all right, now it's scaling up. Okay, so now we've triggered an artificial scale event. Now, the way that we interact and deal with this in Kubernetes is just through this describe command. So if we describe our horizontal pod autoscaler, we should see threshold crossed, uh, scale event initiated, and so forth. So uh, yeah, here we go. So our new size was set to four. The reason was that the CPU resource utilization went above the target. And it's actually said that it, that's happened twice over the last minute. So. There we go. That was easy. Once we got it over a few little humps there. Uh, let's kill Siege. That should all scale back down because the CPU utilization will no longer be used. All right. Not ideal, right? Like CPU based scaling. I mean, I always think the CPU is indicative of you know, we, we can saturate it. So it's an important thing to kind of monitor and keep an eye on, but not something you know if we talk about scaling being a proactive rather than reactive thing cpu seems like something that is like worst case oh no like we don't have enough cpu we need more and of course if we're running out of cpus we've got other challenges so what we actually want to scale on is well if we know the average response time for our application then if it gets below a certain service level agreement or objective, then we want to scale up as well to try and bring that back under the under the value that we're happy with. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, I mean, CPU isn't, it's quite possible to have loads of CPU left, but you've run out of network sockets or you've run out of processes or. Yeah, that's, that's actually a, a fantastic point. Um, Thanks. <laughs> CPU is, <laughs> CPU saturation is, is one symptom, but it's not necessarily what is, like, yeah. If we look at the response time of a request, it can actually be, the multiple symptoms could be driving that. And then that's, that's better to monitor on. Yeah, I was just thinking about a system I worked on that had that large binary downloads. And basically the network card on the server, well, it's not a real network card. The network could be, capacity of the server could be saturated and it's not really doing anything it's just serving a big file yep. so what are you uh, driving towards you can measure something better yeah I, I mean i always think scaling and monitoring is best done by our users but we don't want them to report the problem we want it to be automated so for me i, I want to know if i expect my php application to respond in 11 milliseconds or whatever siege was telling us hopefully then we want to monitor that going above what we expect and, and scale it okay uh, uh okay we got a question from areza so run out of network socket how does kubernetes going to handle that so there's two aspects to auto scaling on kubernetes uh the one we're focusing on today is scaling of the workload which means we're going to monitor for uh metrics on the workload and our users to scale those pods up um if you want to monitor the platform to scale the platform up then you have to look at 
you know traditional monitoring approaches like the cpu the network the disk on your linux system and then horizontally scale the nodes in your kubernetes cluster to make sure you have the capacity to scale the pods that are running on the cluster two very very different things uh, and maybe that's a good idea for another episode but definitely not something we're going to be covering today um, mm -hmm. but i do love talking about monitoring in general so thanks for the question okay uh, let me see if i can find any sensible conscious stream of thought today there are two ways for us to get some metrics out of our Laravel application. One that involves us writing code and modifying our application, and one that doesn't. Keenan, you got a preference. <laughs> Alex, got a preference. Um, if you can change no code and get the same result, that's preferable. It's also the dubious one, but I'm going to give it my best shot. So, Because <laughs> <laughs> inevitably, when you get code required for monitoring new sections of code might not monitor it appropriately whereas if it's automated or abstracted away then it should be just handled and you're not relying on somebody doing that work yeah yeah a lot of developers aren't thinking about those concerns are they when they're writing the no and writing you don't really want them to think about that either yeah, i think we're gonna it should be there should be a level of abstraction between why it works in production efficiently and why um like you're coding it in a certain way i guess okay let's try and do both right i think we've got enough time to do this um and i think they're, they're both valuable so when, when we run in kubernetes we, we actually have access to a part and called a sidecar a sidecar means that we run an extra container in the pod that allows um that shares the same networking namespace ped namespace and a few other bits and pieces together one of the things that do, one of the really useful use cases for that uh, is generally called service mesh, even though I don't want to use service mesh today, but I can still use that proxy effect to capture all of the requests that come in and out of our application. In theory, what we should be able to do is deploy Linkerd to this Kubernetes cluster, have it inject the proxy into our Laravel application, and then have it expose response time metrics on each request that comes in and out of our container without writing any single code. I think that would be pretty neat. So uh, we'll give it a go uh okay uh, da, da, da. i'm pretty sure we don't need to use the linker d cli but we might as well why not i'm pretty sure i can just apply a manifest rather than do this i just don't know if it's going to be documented here yeah so we'll just we'll wait for the cli hopefully it's nice and quick I really need to start taking notes of stuff to install before the stream so that you're not all sitting watching Brew run. But how's Brew on the M1, Kieran? Is it better? Is it fixed? Does it work? <laughs> How do you mean? I think when the M1s first came out, Brew didn't work. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Well, day one, I was able to get Homebrew working. But um, at the time, everything had to build from source. Ah, okay. Um, and a lot of I things didn't. It. They've released version now, three of Homebrew now, which I think yeah. resolved all of those problems, or like a lot of them anyway. Yeah, pretty much. So you could get Homebrew 2 working really quickly and almost, I, I got my laptop a few weeks after they were available and a few a few of the packages had bottles already, they call them a bottle, right? The pre-compiled thing. A few of them had already got it, but most of them were building from source and it's just slowly been filling out. Um, and the ones that didn't build from source got patched pretty quick. So with Homebrew 3, uh, you don't have to... I had a couple of manual steps to install it, but you don't need that anymore. It just works. And anything that doesn't work, you can run under as an Intel package anyway. Yeah, That's it's fine. got that translation there, doesn't it? Yeah, which works really well. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you're not really aware of it. You can just run an Intel binary. And it transpiles it somewhere. And stores the transpiled there's, version. There's some magic somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want transpiles to. Transpiles the binary to an ARM binary and stashes that away somewhere for future use. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to segue or deviate too much from what we're talking about, but like I read yeah. a really impressive article where they were saying that the Rosetta compilation, translation, and then running of the binary was actually faster than some Intel chips on the M1. <laughs> Which to me just seems ridiculous. Yeah. That anyway. doesn't surprise me. Yeah. 
yeah, let's they get back up. Because they're designing, because the chip's designed for this use, there's there's some instructions and a whole memory access mode that's only there to make Rosetta work. That if you were building an ARM chip from scratch, you wouldn't have. Okay, cool. So it's all right, uh, I've taken the resources off of this uh, just so that we can have a bit of flexibility as we deploy this. Um, I'm going to reapply this. What we should see is it's really nothing yet on directory, uh, other than those resources being changed, and we can confirm that with a get pods. And you can see our application still has two containers, which is Nginx and uh, FPM. What we want to leverage with Linkerd now running in our cluster, I'm hoping that it's healthy. Uh, maybe I should just check that anyway. Yeah, tick, 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 tick. Nice. Uh, is that we can now use something called automatic sidecar injection to add the third container to our pod, which gives us all the proxy support. Uh, I've never done this before, but I'm confident. <laughs> So yeah, automatic proxy injection. I mean, I've used Linkerd before. I haven't done it quite in this scenario, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, and all we need to do is add an annotation um, to our uh, manifest. In fact, here's one here. And we will change it to enabled, obviously. Uh, da -da -da, metadata, annotations, enabled. This should give us that third container. Well, that wasn't very nice, was it? Um, the documentation said something about rollout restart or something. Yeah, the annotations I don't think will trigger the... the so the way that this works is that Linkerd runs the admission controller in the cluster, which monitors for the deployment being created. Um, I think if I just do this... No. So that's, is this basically the Kubernetes version of turn off and on again, delete the pod and recreate it? <laughs> I deleted the deployment, yeah. All right, maybe I need to enable Linkerd. Did you do that function often? Would I? Yeah, no, of course I would. Uh, all right, so mm. why did it not work? I can always do it the manual way if I really need to, but I wanted to use the nice shiny way. Yeah, so let's just do it the manual way. So this does it at a manifest level rather than doing it through the admission controller. Uh, that's what I get for trying to do something that I hadn't done before. Uh, resources, ops, deployment, no, Kubernetes deployment. And uh, Linkerd inject will add that container and then we'll redeploy it. Uh, now we should have one. So it sucks that I had to do it manually, but as long as we get it working, I'm not too fast. So now we have a third container. Uh, and we don't need to describe it, but you know, this is just a proxy. Uh, and what we really should see here um, is if we kill our port forward and start that again, is that our application still functions as normal. I love it that my voice goes high pitched when I say that as if it's a question, but. Yeah, as normal. Yeah, as normal. However, every request in and out is going through Linkerd, which means if we pull and expose the metrics from Linkerd, we should be able to see um, a little bit of information about how long those requests take. Uh, and I'm sure there is a command I can steal to do that too. Uh, metric. Yeah, there we go. So let's see. Getting data from the proxies, port forward. Oh, there is a UI as well, actually. I wonder if we could just browse to the UI. Hmm. We all like UIs, don't we? What's the namespace? Nope. Has it got its own? There we go. Uh, port forward, Linkerd web. I really should have looked to see what port it runs on. It was like 4291, I think. We're about to find out. Da, da, da. No. I was close. If you go to documentation, there was definitely a four involved. 
four one nine one. Okay. Oh, oh no, no, sorry. that's the that's through. not the UI port though. Oh, is it okay right now? Yeah. So. Uh, docs. Show me the UI, please. Uh, I'm just gonna have to Google it. Linker D UI. In fact. Might as well show people the Kubernetes we're doing this, right? You don't always need to go to the doc. So we can see that we have a pod here. We can just describe it and see what ports are available. So, uh, da, 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 where have we got ports? Well, 4191 might actually be the port, or either 4143. So, uh, 4191. On that, on that um, documentation, there's a something here which is exposing dashboard which is port 8084 8084 8084 but i not really sure what it is I'm looking at ah it is it's a good call we'll get there oh. okay uh, so this i am not familiar with but i do i am uh, this is cool let's see roots nope is this just going to be service meshy stuff? Deployments. Here's our uh, Laravel application. I can see our inbound successes. Oh, things are working well. I guess we can break that with running siege, right? Uh, Wait, uh, which UI are we looking at here? Is this the Kubernetes UI or is this Linkerd one? What's this Linkerd UI? Linkerd one. Oh, it's just because it shows all that stuff like the cron jobs and daemon sets and deployments and stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, because Linkerd can inject its proxy into any of these resources, ah, you can kind of break right. it down and take a look at it. Um, so we can get, let's go to our root metrics. We can see some stuff here. Okay. Does it go? Does it drill down anymore? No, not really. What's this Grafana link? Does it really deploy Grafana too? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's just made your day. That, was... that is awesome. Uh, yeah, I should be more familiar with Linkerd, but I, I I'm very impressed with that uh, deploy setting all of this up. That is awesome. All right, let's run Siege. Let's let's break this right. So, uh, <laughs> and then we'll hook up the auto scaler to it based on those metrics. So, we just want to port forward to our Laravel application again. I don't think I have that running anywhere. Uh, oh, pick a different yeah, port. Uh, Seven thousand. Uh, oh, I, I did have it running. Okay, it doesn't really yeah. matter though. Uh, I've got paired directory history as well, so I need to go into the right directory to get my command. Uh, now on seven thousand. Uh, let's turn on refresh. Last five minutes. Refresh every five seconds. And let's see if we can see some charts go crazy here. I can't believe it. Not only does it like so by just running Linkerd in this cluster, adding mm. the proxy container, we've got Linkerd UI showing which services are communicating with each other. We've got Grafana provisioned with pre-canned dashboards to show us request information, and we can already see the latency here spiking. Yeah, that's really cool. That's cool. This, that wasn't supposed to turn into a plug for Linkerd, but I feel like I'm just going to have to keep saying nice things about it now. <laughs> yeah. So we, we can see all these metrics uh, going a little wild now. So, so it looks jump... like the latency is actually in hitting like 10 to 20 seconds. Is that not two seconds? Oh, is it? God, I can't. The resolution is not great. Is it? Yeah, the, there? there's the one downside to Grafana. Zooming is not great. <laughs> Uh, just because it's so visual, of course. But uh, yeah, that's oh, two yeah. seconds. So. Okay. Which isn't great, but it's okay. It's better than 20. It's not great for a static it, page. But... Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a page which, which returns to words like hello world. That's it. Okay, so one of the things we should be able to do is uh, if we go to just explore, this is going to give us raw access to Prometheus, and we should be able to query the metrics that Linkerd is creating for us for our service. Uh, I kind of wish I had access to the Prometheus UI. I'm not, but we'll do it from a dashboard, right? Because we know the metrics that we want to monitor on, which is the, we'll, we'll use latency for today. 
Uh, so let's click edit on this and see what that query looks like. And then we can use that as the basis for our auto scaling. Yeah. So we can see here, uh, doo -doo -doo. So in a histogram, 95th percentile is doing a sum across a rate interval, looking at response latency millisecond bucket. Uh, and it's doing, it's doing the rate over 30 seconds. So that kind of helps. Uh, so we know that we have this available. So I'm just going to copy that metric name and then we're going to go back to explore and just drop this in. Go. If there is a Prometheus install, is there not going to be a Prometheus UI also installed or? Don't get smart. Uh, I hope so, maybe. Why is that not running? Oh, there we go. So now we can see, uh, we should be able to see Whoa, sorry, it's just going a bit slow. Yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> there we go. All right, cool. We've got what we need. We can, we can scale on that. I'm pretty confident. Uh, and you were saying because we have, let's uh, shut down Siege just now. We probably, you're right. I think we do have a link. We do have a Prometheus UI. So let's run get pods. Prometheus. Let's try that then. Uh, Linkerd port forward. Uh, oh, what's the Prometheus port? 1990? Promise that's the last question I'll ask myself in that tone. 1990. Yeah. Um, oh, I copied that thing. But we should, yeah, now we got this fancy thing. No, not fancy, but you know, we got a list of all the metrics that we can actually execute against. Uh, the response time is the one we're curious about. So, yeah, response time, latency, millisecond bucket. Uh, we can use label selectors to filter this, but let's just get them all first. And then we can open this and we want, so we just want a Laravel application. Uh, let's see what we have, so namespace. Uh, maybe I don't remember how to do. Is it equal since yeah? Oh, but we got nothing. <laughs> Execute. What's the name of species we've got here? Linker D, Linker D. Oh, so it's just doing the the proxy ones. Do we actually have anything that? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so. Let's copy this. So this is our application. Oh, it's a long way down. There we go. Uh, <laughs> cool. There we go. So this is just the stats that hit our application. Hmm. Now, where's the buckets? Uh, histograms normally have a size oh le1 le2 le3 okay so this seems to be the number of requests that took one second two seconds three seconds four seconds five seconds 10 20 30 40 those must be milliseconds <laughs> uh, and we can see that nothing is taking above oh no maybe that's something else uh, above infinite okay <laughs> this this that involves me to explain how, 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 Insta, uh, how histogram buckets work, right? So this less than is 50,000. I'm assuming that is milliseconds, which means that we are looking at 50 second response time and then everything else is in the plus infinity bucket. We seem to actually have really even distribution um, of the number. I don't think this is actually the number of requests. Um, so we can always tweak that. But what's important is that we do have the ability and um, to look at these metrics so uh, yeah here's our actual application i'm not sure why i'm not getting an idea now though uh you've turned off your sage 
I know, but um, it's still... There's like... been no request in the last Oh, no minutes. request for the last minute, yeah. Okay. Uh... That's the refresh you just changed, not the time. <laughs> I swear I've done yeah. this before. <laughs> Oh. <clears throat> There's definitely been David in the last 30 minutes, so... Oh, but you're on the wrong namespace. All right, okay. Doesn't matter. We have metrics, we can scale. Now let's go through the manual instrumentation of our application using a Laravel package, and then bring it back around to what we actually want to, and then join all the dots. Okay, so I think... What I wanted to show there, I got really sidetracked by the shiny cool features, was that we can inject <laughs> Linkerd into our cluster, automatically inject a proxy, and get a whole bunch of HTTP and request-based metrics out of it that we can use for our HPAs. Now what we want to do as well, okay, that's nice, but what if we want to get custom metrics out of our application and the ways that we can do that? Okay. So, the standard way to do this um, is just to expose, I mean, we're still port forwarding, aren't we? Yeah, but it's on 7,000. Yeah, cool. Uh, normally what we do is just add a metrics endpoint. So right now, if we go to slash metrics on our Laravel application, we're not getting anything back whatsoever. Uh, and we want to change that. Now, typically, you don't need to write the instrumentation for this yourself. There's generally middleware adapters for, like, every, I think every language and framework I've worked with in the past, someone has already written this, and you just have to bring in the package. So uh, this is where I'm going to lean on both of you. My PHP is incredibly rusty. Uh, but I did up front <laughs> Google Laravel Prometheus uh, metrics. There were a couple of packages. You can see I've clicked on them. Uh, are you familiar with either either of these developers and we have trust in them, or am I just picking the first one? Um, I don't know if either of them, so... Yeah, <laughs> right. Which one has the most stars? Uh, this one did. I think the other one's only got 11. See, I got... It was like Sophie's Choice. It's like, this one hasn't been updated since March 2020, which is understandable, given 2020. And then there's... It's uh, means it's stable. <laughs> it means it's stable. This one was updated more recently, but had less stars. So... <sighs> Like da, da, da. Will we go with the recent one then? Like stars aren't stars don't actually mean it's yeah, quality. Go. So, no true. Uh, all right. So it looks like oh, I mean, oh, I thought it was going to only offer me the get approach, but we do have a, a PHP way of doing this. I don't mm. even know if I have composer. <laughs> Um, if you put it into a, a composer.json file and rebuild the image, it will put it in there. Yeah, good call. I like that. Okay, so we could just drop it in here. Uh, I guess it would go here. We don't need to start. Can I just do latest? Uh, no, just, just put a star if you want latest. Star. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I don't want to rebuild this image too many times, and we don't have. To, we're not, you know, developing locally. I don't have PHP or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is just uh, instrument it, hope that it works, and then we'll rebuild it there. Okay. Uh, so this then wants us to connect this in uh, into our Bootstrap app. Sure. I mean, just keep me right here in the Laravel bits. I'm just going to trust the documentation on this package for the time being. So, <laughs> um, can I just drop it anywhere? I mean, this is an unusual way of doing it, but yeah, <laughs> that that would that would normally not go in the bootstrap file. That would normally go in um, one of the config file. There's config slash app, which is where it would go. Uh, sorry, bootstrap flash up. It would go in there. But... That says bootstrap. Oh, wait. Up. Oh, sorry. You are there. Um, okay. Uh, there's normally a massive array of them. Uh, one minute. Well, I don't see that. Line. Ah, no. Sorry. Um, if you go to config slash up. And 
and then scroll down a bit. There's a section called aliases. Hmm. You'd normally put it in here. That's like the standard way of doing it in Laravel, but I assume there's a reason they haven't done that because what they've done is more effort. <laughs> right, I'm just going to trust them. Just, just go with whatever they've got. I, I don't know why they've done it, that way, but they must have done it for a reason. Okay, and then we have to register. Uh, I mean, I don't even know if this can just be lumped together here. If there's any ordering constraints, like should I put it to I... the bottom or? We're going to think that's yeah, not, okay. Yeah, so this package has a default configuration which uses the following environment variables. So we just need to do a little bit of tweaking and then oh does this actually want us to do something else to uh, to customize dot env. Do we have a dot env that goes into the container? Yep. In fact I can just put these in a deployment. Like this this yeah. That was one of the things we did last time was we set it up with a config map, didn't we? Did we? Did we? We did. Nice. Cool. Oh yeah, and there's those secret things, but that's all been shut mm. down now, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Prometheus namespace, that's going to need tweaks. That's not where we've not really deployed our own Prometheus yet, but we can do that for sure. I'll just we'll piggyback on the linker D1. Uh, I'm assuming we want to enable root-based metrics. Yes. Although, I mean, if these are the defaults, I probably don't need to provide them, right? Um, it depends. Obviously, it depends whether they've like. Defined you mean you don't understand how this random package that you've never seen before that I've just presented to you works? Yeah, basically. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Prometheus root middleware null. I um, don't know what you are. Don't know what you are. Don't know what you are. Uh, Prometheus Redis. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is where things get a little weird in PHP land that I never really thought about up front, and I really should have. But Prometheus has counters that usually are stored in memory, and then PHP with its mm -hmm. CGI share nothing kind of approach probably right. wants us to have a Redis to be able to cache those counters so they don't get reset to zero every time. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably just need to f quickly throw a Redis into this as well. I bet you're all really so excited about that, that. Is the idea that it periodically would export, so it keeps that state somewhere in the application, then periodically exports it to Prometheus? Yes. So the, the way that Prometheus uh, works is yeah. it's a pool-based system. It's going to come to our okay. application on the metrics endpoint every 10 or 30 seconds. We are going to have all these counters that we need to persist across multiple requests. Gotcha. So Redis is going to have to make that work. Um, OK. so. We'll, we're going to piggyback on Linkerd, right? So let's do Linkerd. Uh, it doesn't seem to allow me to specify the name or where that Prometheus is. But that's not important because Prometheus is going to come to us. Oh, I'm so confused. Because we can't, we can't configure the target. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to deploy Prometheus. That's going to be easier. Yeah. So. This is Prometheus getting started, get the docs, deploy the manifest. Um, most people would probably go down the route of configuring the um, the operator. Maybe that's easier. Kubernetes. Ugh. Prometheus operator. Let's just deploy that. Quick start bundle. Bundle. There we go. Okay, apply our bundle. Very trusting. I have no idea what's in this file. <laughs> but the Prometheus operator will give us a CRD approach to request new Prometheus servers and then configure them using something called a service monitor, which is just another CRD. So, you know, in fairness, I do think this is the quickest way probably for us to get this working. We applied it to the default namespace, so we should see our operator running here. Now we need the YAML to ask for one Prometheus. So let's jump back to the docs. I guess we'll just 
get it from the gate. Nope. Get from the upper me uh, There's a service monitor, that's good. And there's a Prometheus. Okay. So add it to our ops, Kubernetes. Now we have this dependency that we're not going to automate in any way, but I'm just going to add the CRD, which says give me one Prometheus. We'll call it Prometheus. Uh, do, do, do. Service monitor selector. Um, we just That just means we need to remember to add team front end to uh, our service monitor. I think that should be all right. Well, let's find out. So we'll get to the right directory. There's a lot of just let's find out, isn't there? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the operator should detect the CRD and should spin us up one Prometheus. Assuming I haven't got anything wrong very quickly there. I would have expected to see my Prometheus already. Uh, did I get anything wrong? I don't think I need to add my service monitor first. Um, but I will just in case. Laravel. We've added the label that expects. Now we want to point it to our application. So if we take a look at our deployment, we have this label uh, and we can just match that straight up. Uh, and it's using a named port to work out how to fetch those metrics. Uh, so we just need to make sure that our port is named, which is not, um, but we could just do that. Oh no, because I don't want to reapply this. <laughs> because of the sidecar. So we'll just uh, do port 80, like so. Uh, oh, we'll that. Um, yes. Oh, okay. Right. I was going to say, is, uh, you've got the service monitor's name is Laravel. Um, does that need to match the Laravel example project, or is that its own thing? Or oh, line four? Uh, no, that, that's okay. Um, so the Prometheus is doing a service monitor selector based on the label team front end, which I've kept the same here. So okay, right, cool. uh, that just means that our Prometheus should detect that service monitor, which will add it as a scrape target to our Prometheus, which hasn't magically shown up yet, disappointedly, uh, and pull in our metrics. So uh, why do I not have a Prometheus? Let's grab the logs of this quickly and see if there's anything obvious. Okay, what have I forgotten? Operator, deploy and manage Prometheus server. Yep, that would be nice. Uh, da -da -da. Um, one of them's got operated, not operator. Does that matter? So that service tells me that it's, it's tried to create our Prometheus, maybe just failed. Okay, get service monitors. Uh, Laravel, All right, let's describe it. It's all right. We just don't have a Prometheus. Uh, I'm just going to deploy my own Prometheus. Uh, 
And then I'm just clicking on random links looking for YAML. <laughs> Pretty much sums up my job as well, to be fair. Uh, kind deployment. Nope, not there. Next. Like, deployment Prometheus. I mean, there's nothing particularly special about it. Nope, I want the YAML. Uh, Kubernetes, nope. Um, I'm not enjoying c computers today. How old is this? 2018. Uh, that's probably not the wisest thing to go throw on my cluster, is it? What have I missed? What have I been silly with, either of you? <laughs> I have no idea. So we installed the operator and it, it's happy. It's definitely happy. Uh, I found something which has the word deployment in it and the word Prometheus as well. So <laughs> if you want more YAML to throw at a wall, that might, I don't know. Uh, hold on. Let's do get Prometheus. So we, we, we had a CRD and we requested a Prometheus. We can see that we have no version and no replicas, right? That's that's bad. Uh, so we're going to describe our Prometheus and see if there's any events on it. I'm really regretting calling it Prometheus. So describe Prometheus. Prometheus. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's failing because this service account doesn't exist. So let's use the default service account. Uh, duh, duh, duh. and see if that keeps it happy so now we can just redeploy our prometheus.yaml once I learn how to computer uh, and then we'll run get prometheus there we go so it was okay. a service account Whew. I'm not a failure okay so um, I don't know why the operator wasn't printing anything out to say hey the service account doesn't exist you're not going to get your prometheus regardless this is going to configure us a prometheus in our namespace with a service monitor that monitors our laravel application that monitoring is going to fail uh, we'll actually be able to see that through the prometheus ui so let's jump into that very quickly before we deploy our php changes Uh, what you should see here is in targets. I was kind of hoping the service monitor would have picked that up. Maybe I broke that too. Uh, let's see. This is just not showing them. Okay, I think it's trying. Okay, but we don't we don't have anything there for it to work. So let's make the change that we need to make for our application to have that endpoint. So let's go back to those environment variables on our deployment or config map. Apologies. Uh, oh yeah, now we need a Redis. Ugh, right. Uh, <laughs> Redis Kubernetes. Just give me a YAML, a Redis pod. Am I feeling that bold? Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? That's a really stupid idea. Uh, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> so that should give me one Redis. I feel, oh, now it's one available is uh, we probably want to make that available to service yeah that is a really stupid idea i don't even know why i entertained that okay next uh helm i should just do it the proper way shouldn't i uh, so do we need to worry about it back to saying it's deprecated no it's okay <laughs> Okay. Seems like a, such an overhead, doesn't it, to deploy Redis? 
just for this it is again it's only in php because of the sheer nothing yeah. thing um it is a bit of a pain in the the ass but we're just going to go with it uh, and the deprecation warning here is because i know you can't really read the url and i can't zoom in on the url bar um, but this is helm slash charts on github which is deprecated but it's actually pointing us to the bitnami one which is not deprecated so okay it's okay um and we'll call our helm uh, we'll call our redis redis uh, so are we gonna have one redis <laughs> we're gonna have one redis per pot no, oh, we're just redis. going to run one Redis in our cluster, and then our PHP application is going to use that for cache and persistence of Prometheus counters. Uh, mm -hmm. What this should mean is we have a Redis um, service here, which I can now point our PHP application to use. So Redis master, or head, in fact, probably wants the headless service. So yeah, let's do that. So now we need to come back to our config map. And our Redis is available on Redis. Let's point it to the master. I think that's what it's going to expect. Our Prometheus now lives in our namespace. So let's call that default. Uh, this may work. Confident. <laughs> uh, I definitely lacking in confidence today. So now that we've modified this config map, we can apply that first and and nothing should actually happen yet because those keys won't be, be aren't going to be consumed by our php application however what we want to do now is rebuild those images with that code change that we made um, did we finish the code change were we confident there i think did you make your way through the entire file uh, so what's this suggesting um, do, I need, do i need this load component thing Probably. It says to to yeah. come customize the configuration, you either need to override the environment variables, which I've done, or you can copy the included Prometheus.php to this location, edit it, and then use it. So, yeah, we don't need that. Don't. Yeah, just copy that and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> no, ah, don't. And copy then there that. you go, middleware. You want you want the middleware one as well. Okay, so now we have to add this also to our bootstrap app php and again i have no idea whether ordering is important so just put it below it came below in the documentation so yeah that's kind of the the same logic i'm using right now uh to observe guzzle we don't we don't care about guzzle we're not doing api calls all right uh we do have a database provider yeah. so yep. let's get those metrics too I mean, if this application is doing all the things that it suggests it's doing, that, that would be really nice. So uh, I wonder if we could just have used a disk rather than Redis. Well, in fact, it does mention APC here and there's a memory adapter. So maybe we didn't, maybe there was a way to do this without Redis. Yeah. Oh, well. <coughs> all right. Uh, and well, then that's a You could probably use Opcache as well. Yeah, I think, I think that would make a lot of sense too. All right, let's rebuild our images. Um, we're just going to see what happens here, right? Fingers crossed. Hopefully the, oh, I was going to say, hopefully the NPM one won't need to do anything because there's been nothing that's changed in our assets, but I'm guessing we'll I think something's out. changed. Oh, we're copying everything, right? So we've invalidated the cache, haven't we? What a crappy Docker fail. Who wrote that? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we actually, Kieran and I did an episode on uh, really nailing down how to have an optimized cache for building PHP applications. I'm not sure why yeah. we didn't copy that here. Uh, if I, I didn't write this one. That was you, Alex, wasn't it? I wrote this one. It was a copy <laughs> of the stream that me, you, and Kieran did ages ago. Yeah. One oh, from like last October. It was a copy of that. Ah, oh, yeah. So the, the problem is, I think you've done the multiple copies, but we've not got the steps. Oh, no, wait. What? Oh, that's dev. So. Oh, yeah. You have to run the, the composer install here. <laughs> After the. That's uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, no big deal. Um, it won't take too long. Uh, and then what we'll do is, uh, I won't bother re injecting the Linkerd proxy. Um, we, we, we see that working. So let's just leave it out. We'll apply our manifest over the top. 
um, and then we will confirm that the metrics endpoint on our Laravel application works. Once we confirm that, that's, that's pretty much it. Once those metrics are available, we configure the HPA the same way that we did at the start. Is that instead of using CPU, we're going to point it to custom metrics and it should just work, TM. <laughs> It's a shame my little Discordy chat thing's not working. I'll try it again. <laughs> oh well. <gasps> we broke it. Oh no. So what's that complaining about there? Um complaining about Illuminate Foundation application with the SADES. Yeah, okay, so that that's before when I was saying this is a really weird way of doing it. That'll be why it's weird, cause, because it's not a valid way of doing it, it looks like. Um, you, yeah. Is it worth maybe bringing this into a separate, into a separate stream at some point, like using application level metrics? Because I don't think that that package works. <laughs> what? All of those methods, but like with facades and stuff, they don't seem to be like that's not how I would ever register things. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna feel brave here. So hold on. In fact, that is. All right, let's use this one. Okay, we've tried your one. Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is the normal way of doing things. Seem to be the same, so let's let's trust it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll move on. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I need to modify the composer.json. Yep. Like so, and mm -hmm. then in our app.php, we add a provider. So this is com this is config slash app, not the bootstrap slash app which you were in before. Okay. So I, can I just put it anywhere you, here? Um, but the bottom, but yeah. Uh, uh, no, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Right, um, yeah. There's two arrays. Go up to the top of uh, the first array and put that one in. Yeah, here. And then uh, you've got a random. Yeah, yeah, cool. And then we add this one to the aliases. Actually, yeah, so this the, seems the very one, similar. Yeah. It's very I've... similar, but that's the correct way of doing it. I don't know. I assume this is maybe a fork where they've modernized it or something, maybe. Well, hopefully that. Uh, you've got a, a rogue cl uh, closing bracket there as well, by the way. So you might get rid of that. <laughs> Why did they keep copying them? Or did I paste the wrong thing? I think I think that one there was when uh, the first one you copied had you highlighted two lines. I think that's what it was. All right, uh, are these the same? Prometheus namespace, Prome yeah, I think they are. Uh, let's check the config map. The Redis is different. They're just using this. Which is standard um, Laravel. So Prometheus namespace, okay. metrics root enabled and metrics root path. Yes, yes, um, it does want this. So I'm just gonna throw that in very quickly too, even though I killed it in the last example. Um, and then Redis host, Redis port, Redis host and Redis port. Yep. And uh, you need to put the prefix one back in, I think, and the storage adapter. Oh, the storage adapter. So that will make it not. Hmm. That would make it not use Redis, would it not? If you was. Well, they seem to memory. use both, so I'm just going to trust that this person knows yeah. what they're doing. Because <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. So, uh, Redis master. Uh, and why am I getting red squiggles everywhere? It's specified twice. Thirty-three and thirty-six and thirty-four. Okay, so. now it's happy. Uh, we have a comment that I don't understand. Hopefully, one of you two. But Jake Harris says, "2021 and no auto discovery dance game." I don't know. Uh, yeah, so in like Laravel 5.6, like about four years ago, um, service providers were auto-discovered. Um, so you don't have to do 
that stuff where you added to the aliases just by having a composer file, having it in your composer file would make it work. I'm guessing, but he's just on about the fact that it's not been, you know, updated to have that stuff done. Okay, so uh, FPM oh, failed again. Um, that looks like it didn't pull in the composer. Um, pull in the package. Uh, do I need to delete the lock file? No. Um, is it doing a composer yeah. install or composer update? I don't know. <laughs> in the J, in the Docker file. Uh, install preferred desk, no lens, no dev. So delete the lock file. Yeah. 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 I don't know how it handles copying a file that doesn't exist. Right, fingers crossed. Uh, it well, doesn't. I, <laughs> I thought it might not. Oh, because um, it's that. All right. Okay. Yeah. There is a copy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. I know we're we're over time for today. So if either of you need to drop, feel free. <laughs> um, I'm doing little whatever. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm gonna. We have hit a lot. Of I do actually have to go because I've got a call in five minutes. Yeah, no worries, mate. Thanks for tuning in, joining but, us. Yeah, I added a lot. Thanks for having me. See you guys. See you. Uh, okay, so what happened Ooh. here then? So this is saying that um, the package. It can it basically can resolve our dependencies because we're using um, a newer version of Guzzle than what they basically. This is a package that isn't up to date with dependencies and stuff. Um, is maybe, that maybe, maybe why someone with, forked it? <laughs> um, but, yeah, but then the one that's forked is worse. I'm just going to try and configure the fork then the way the other one is configured because it's so similar that okay. I can't I can't see yeah. why it wouldn't work, right? He okay, says, yeah. And if it doesn't work, you know what? We'll come back to it another day. Uh, but I'm going to give this my best shot. So, uh, if anyone watching has added Prometheus to their application, feel free to throw some advice our way. All right, so we want to add something to config app aliases, which we did previously. Oh, wrong code. To me, this just looks like it's screaming out for somebody to write a new and better package. Yeah, it's kind of the vibe I'm getting. That's the wrong one. Could be a fun, could be a fun project to do, I guess. But yeah, most of this was modified two years ago. Bits of it were changed five months ago, but... Hmm. Okay, so I've added the alias. Uh, we need to register this, which seems to be done in its own way, but we copied, you know, we, we saw that up here. Uh, and then I think I already modified composer.json, but I'll double check. Yes. Um, just one second. What version of Laravel are we using? Can you just check the composer.json file? Eight. Right. Yeah, this won't work. The package hasn't been updated. It's only, it's only seems to support version <laughs> seven. And there's an, there's an open um, issue on there for supporting seven. So, so does that yeah. mean there is there is no working Prometheus Laravel package. It certainly looks that way from a cursory look at Google, yeah. Uh, Laravel. I find that hard to believe. Um, I mean, would there be an alternative to, instead of Prometheus, like that is done by somebody or maybe? So, I mean, I can definitely walk through. Why don't we add a manual metric endpoint for now? We can show people. I mean, it's, okay. it's so easy, right? Um, these packages are supposed to make it automated and that, 
you know, the middleware will hook into the request pipeline, see the request coming in, take a timestamp, see the request going out, take a timestamp, hold them in memory, mm-hmm. and then drop them into a page, right? But Prometheus metrics are not difficult. So let's remove this. Let's go back into our config. Let's remove all that stuff as well. Um, <laughs> really disappointed that there wasn't just a make it go package. Uh, one thing we yeah, could it, it do, does look like there is one that's an opening in the market of packages where it would be a nice, nice thing to fill. We could instrument through open telemetry. Uh, which is another really, really good approach for doing distributed tracing in your application. It's not what I'm trying to show today, so I won't do that. Um, we'll add a custom metrics endpoint right now, mm-hmm. and then we'll wrap up for today. And I think we'll come back and we'll revisit. Uh, you know, maybe even you and I can sit down and write a Laravel middleware to do this. Like I said, it is not difficult. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm down for that because um, writing Laravel packages is quite fun. So, okay. Let's save all of this. I'm going to close all my tabs. How do I add a new root <laughs> to my Laravel application? Okay, roots. so go to roots slash web.php. Okay, nice. Um, this is kind of a caveman approach, but... You know, I'm okay with caveman it. approach because yep. you know, we, we are over time, but I want to try and get something working. So uh, how do... Uh, you want it to be get... a get request, then put get, put the path, and then... Is there no shorthand and function syntax in PHP? Uh, there is. I just don't use it because it's PHP eight, and some of our stuff is still using PHP seven point stuff. Okay, can I just use print here? <laughs> um, so, like, what do you want to do? Just get like a string on the page. Yeah, hey, I just want to return a plain text string. Okay, return double quotes string in there and double quotes. Semicolon. That's it. Uh, does PHP have string literals, multi-line strings? Uh yeah, so it's oh Christ, how do you do that? Um three left chevrons. <laughs> chevrons. Really? I have to do a here doc? Um I believe that's how you do it, yeah. Um, well you can do double quotes and put that over multiple lines if you want to. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's try and get the response time here. Uh these are just Prometheus metrics. There's nothing fancy here, and then I can do one, I can add metadata to this. I could say app is Laravel. Um, if this was going to be a histogram, I would add my buckets. So we'll say less than one, uh, two second responses, three second responses. We'll assume that you know 128 requests, have, 128 requests have come in. And we responded in under one second. We've had four, two requests that took two seconds, and one request that took three seconds. Like, that's it. That is a met. That is a metrics endpoint. Obviously, we'd want real data. Yeah. Uh, why is my end of here doc not working? Um. So you need to put um a semicolon at the end of it. I tried that. Oh. And also semicolon after your line day. Got it. Thank you. So obviously. We'd actually want the middleware to track how many requests are fitting into each bucket. We can also add any arbitrary metric here that we want. Um, we could do HTTP version, app, Laravel, uh, PHP 7.4. Um, and another thing we could do is users <laughs> name, name, equals David and we had two Davids right completely random and um, but this is all a metrics endpoint is is something that fits this format and then we can deploy it so I'm going to hopefully build this image deploy it hit the <laughs> metrics endpoint Prometheus hopefully if I've not messed anything up will scrape that based on the service monitor that we created and we could use that for an HPA that's kind of where I want us we'll hopefully be finished in the next Five minutes, confidence. Okay. And maybe I'll get some lunch today. <laughs> it's quarter to four, if you're not eating anything yet. Uh, it's been a busy day. Uh, so Jake Harris, I think he's picking up the gauntlet and is going to attempt to magic us a Prometheus middleware for Laravel. That would be amazing. Uh, and Alex and I would both be happy to help. Please feel free to link us to any repository or any efforts. Okay. <laughs> now that we have a new image, we just want to redeploy all of our manifests hopefully i've not broken anything in there during this kind of hectic component uh, and then we're going to do a get pods 
let's see uh, four seconds that's good so we have got a deployed application i'm going to port forward to laravel example uh, let's see if 8080 is available yep we should have our application and we should have uh we didn't get new lines or is that just my browser um, if you view source, you know, okay, like, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Usually, in fact, oh, it must be my Chrome has a Prometheus extension that formats metrics, but oh well. Okay. That's, I mean, I, I wish I could say it's there's more magic than this, but that's all a metric standpoint is. Obviously, you want the numbers to be real, you want the dimensions, the metadata to be vast and understand your application. You can expose as much context as you want here that you want to be able to query, slice, and dice with from a monitoring perspective. You'd also want it to be behind some form of authentication, I guess, wouldn't you? Some sort of like, you, you wouldn't... I mean, you might only want to respond on a, a local INET address, like mm. the, you know, the Kubernetes and pod or service siders, sure. Like 10 dot something or whatever. You might not want to, yeah, you probably don't want it to be exposed to your public end using customers. Yes, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily put it behind auth. I would probably just... Uh, Firewall or something. Yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's a whole, I mean, there's so many different approaches to that, but let's cover that later. Okay, let's see if our service monitor works. So, uh, let's see. Describe service monitor Laravel. Uh, hopefully, let's get our Prometheus up and running again. Did I still have that port forwarding? I can't even remember what my port forwards are anymore. It was like 91, 91, I think, for that one. And that's link is D. All right, okay, let's close them. Let's port forward. <laughs> I know. You need, some, you need to get on the, um, the screens um, or Tmux. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't stand Tmux. Okay. Uh, how come? Uh, I just, I, it breaks scrolling. Scrolling becomes really cumbersome on it. Uh, oh, it's yeah, it's like fun. command B, left square bracket, and yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I wish my service monitor was working. So what is the service monitor trying to do? Okay, so Prometheus is a pool-based system, which means that Prometheus has to know which pods within our cluster should be, um, they should fetch metrics from. It does that through the Prometheus operator monitoring for our service monitors here. And those service monitors tell it how to find things that expose Prometheus metrics and then it updates the targets and then it should just work. But where have you told it to go to slash metrics? Uh, okay, let's, let's double check my configuration. So we added something to our resources here in Prometheus. We told it to find Laravel example application use port 80 and that's going to go to the pods in this application on port 80 and fetch slash metrics oh it does that slash metrics by default yes okay right so labels team front end exist should be going to this prometheus mm, uh, so we can double check that we have this label on our deployment i'm pretty sure we do yeah, I think you copied that one. Yep, and our pod gets it too, which is perfect. And um, the port is 80. The um, port is 80. Yep. Uh, oh, is it getting is it getting that from... Oh, it doesn't matter if it goes via the Nginx to FPM, does it? That doesn't matter. No, because we hit it in the browser, so it should be okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's port forward to Prometheus again. I would... Let's see service discovery it does seem to be picking up some laravel configuration oh well, that's the job <laughs> why is it going to the job I wonder if it has the same labels on it oh it probably does all right let's try it was a generic label and it's not specific for web or anything. Okay, let's add promi yes. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm going to add it. Uh, and see if that tweaks our configuration. Let's modify this here. So 
uh, instead of going here we'll do this and we'll do the same well, in fact that's okay yeah that should hopefully work <laughs> who knows at this point right so let's apply everything oh uh did not like that yeah it's okay let's just delete our deploy okay Uh, we'll give that a second. Uh, hopefully, just in fact, yeah, it's almost healthy already. Uh, so we have a comment. Uh, no, I know. It says uh, open telemetry for PHP is very new, so waiting on gRPC uh, and the PHP package to help with direct integration with Honeycomb. Yeah, Honeycomb is a great front end for open telemetry and distributed traces and structured events. Uh, really cool. Um, just a really cool product. Definitely worth checking out in this space. Uh, and open telemetry is new all around the board. Um, they are starting to stabilize on their APIs. They have caught up with a lot of the feature gaps that they had during the migration from open census and distributed tracing, open tracing. Um, so yeah, it's worth checking out. And I think instrumenting your application on open telemetry now is definitely the safest way to move forward. Uh, all right, let's see what happens. Let's go back to our targets. Oh, Prometheus, you're really annoying me today. <laughs> I wonder if we can just do this old school style. Prometheus annotation. Uh, there used to be a way where you could just add an annotation to your pod and tell Prometheus to go find you. Um, may still work, although the service monitors are the replacement for that. So I would be keen to fix it, but I'm also worried about time here. <laughs> We're way over where we want to be. Uh, so let's see if we can get any more information from that service monitor. Uh, Laravel. Uh, okay. No is working on an open telemetry package, github slash Sean Hood slash. You know what? I actually came across that and opened it earlier. Uh, your package. I have it opened on my other browser. Um, I was going to show this off today, um, but I hadn't. I didn't really want to go into the open telemetry stuff, but we will definitely do more on open telemetry over the coming weeks. So, yeah, uh, cool that you're working on that package. Uh, okay, service monitor. Prom me labels, yes. Port 80 should be fine. Uh, what we can do is take a look at the logs, which I know failed us miserably earlier on the operator. Yeah, that logging is crap. <laughs> uh, I'm going to restart it just for the sake. Um, and see if it reconfigures the Prometheus thing. I mean, it should be dynamic. It really shouldn't be a problem. Let's try just restarting that too. When in doubt, restart everything, right? So. Yeah, it worked last time. Okay, so we'll go check our targets. Hmm. So where it says zero out of 11 active targets, does that mean that it's not finding how to access those 11? Yeah, it's the, the service monitor is not picking up our application whatsoever. Mm. Which is frustrating. Anyway, uh, I think we'll just need to leave it there. Not as successful as I was hoping. I think there is a lot. Oh, let me drop off our empty slot there. See, you know, we're bigger. Right. <laughs> That should have been a lot easier. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not happy <laughs> with with the challenges that we came across. I, I, you know, Jake, you know, you said you're you're going to give that a go. I think maybe this is just Laravel. I, I think Symphony possibly has better support with Prometheus exporters. Uh, I know when I did a little bit of googling just to see if these existed in the PHP ecosystem, um, there weren't a lot of options, but. This is going to save you from instrumenting your code yourself. You know, you don't really want to add your own slash metrics endpoint and be and be writing those out. You really want the middleware to do it all for you. Open telemetry is a good way of doing it. We did have success with Linkerd 
an automated proxy metrics, which was sweet. Um, so I think, based on what we've seen today, the, the best way forward until Jake writes his new million dollar library and starts selling it to people uh, would be to go down the automated proxy approach. Um, because the most valuable metric you can scale on is how long does it take to respond to 95% of my customers and am I happy with that number? And when the answer is no, scale up. Uh, so Alex, how, how are you feeling with our auto scaling now? <laughs> so we managed to, the only actual auto successful auto scaling we had today was the one that you said started off by saying that you didn't like doing, <laughs> which was the, um, the one based on requests and limits. Yes. Um, the horizontal auto scaler in Kubernetes. Yes. So there's definitely more that we can do on this. Um, because yeah, you like, mentioned a few times about doing custom metrics and things to scale based on responses from Prometheus or whatever. Um, uh huh. So let me just show how that would have worked. Um, you know, if we had a Laravel package that was exposing Prometheus metrics and our service monitor was being picked up and that was available and I could query those metrics in Prometheus, what I would have wanted, what, what I would have done next is deploy the Prometheus adapter to our Kubernetes cluster. The Prometheus mm -hmm. adapter is what exposes new, or in fact, any adapter for the metric server is what exposes new custom metrics that can be used in the HPA rules. Um, in fact, I was already in the demo directory, I think, and I want that. Let's just mark down. Okay. Hopefully there's some YAML down here, but this would have allowed me to use custom metrics to do the HPA. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on this, where we would have been able to instead of using the CPU utilization on the HPA object, it's actually used rules, which identifies series, which would have been our HTTP response time. And we would have told it to, you know, perform a query against that and try and get what is that percentile. Very much like the query that we copied from the Grafana dashboard that Linkerd provided to us. You know, we want to understand mm -hmm. percentiles. You know, we can't give everybody a uh, 30 second, 30 millisecond response time, but we want to try and ensure we get as many people into that bucket as possible. So um, hopefully uh, once we find a Laravel package that works and we can retry this again, we'll be able to get to the stage where we can deploy the Prometheus adapter, configure a new HPA and take it from there. Mm -hmm. All I can hope for the people yeah. that have watched us throughout this is that, you know, hopefully the components and primitives required to do horizontal scaling on Kubernetes are now more familiar to you. You know the right words to Google and you know which packages <laughs> you need to exist in order to get those metrics out of your application and even using Linkerd as well, where, wherever possible. So, um, mm -hmm. well, we were unsuccessful. So, I hope there was enough there for people to, to get interested. Yeah. So in terms of using Linkerd, would you use that alongside or instead of something like CollectD, StatsD, or are those not really relevant at all when you're dealing with Kubernetes com compared to a, a standard VM? Yeah, I'm, very, I'm unlikely to use CollectD or StatsD. Those are, you know, platform or host-based monitoring. They're not really application level stuff, although you can use them in that regard. Uh, Prometheus being a CNCF graduated project, a lot of people are just running it in Kubernetes clusters anyway. The Prometheus operator does work when you get the service account, right? <laughs> The service monitor thing, I'm sure, is my error, and I'm sure when I rewatch this to type up the, you know, the, the timeline for the description, I'll see the stupid mistake that I've made. But obviously, right now, I'm not seeing that. Uh, no, so, I don't see it either. So, so yeah. yeah, it might be might be worth um when we figure out what the mistake is to put a a snippet like um in description or something maybe of. Well, yeah, all of the resources that we have created, even the broken ones for now, will be pushed to your repository, mm -hmm. which is in the show notes. It's also github.com slash go for Alex. Um, Alex Bowers slash Laravel example project, probably. Yep. So it's in the show notes. Slash Alex Bowers, it'll be the one that's on there with the most recent push on it. So yeah, yeah. so all the stuff will be there. Uh, hopefully the Laravel situation improves soon. We'll do a second part of this. And uh, thank you all for watching. And thank you, Alex and, and Kieran, who's left. But thank you for joining me and uh, having some fun. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Yep. And you. Bye.